Hey guys, this is Daniel. Welcome to my short video where I want to demonstrate you how to use the graduated filter in Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw. It's a really powerful tool. A lot of people use it and that's for good reason. And like I said, in this short video here, I want to demonstrate you my favorite ways. And so let's get started here. So we could either go into the raw processing in Adobe Lightroom or yeah, camera raw. In this case here, I have a TIFF file, so we can also go to filter and camera raw filter inside Photoshop to get the same adjustment possibilities. Or let's say almost the same. We don't have a true white balance, but it's not uh, the topic here in this video. Um, so like I said, I have some ways I like to use the graduated filter, and that's mostly three cases. First is to balance out tones. That means when I have a dark foreground and a brighter background, I want to even it out. So I have a flatter file I can further work with in Photoshop to put more extreme adjustments to it. And the second way I like to use it is to add local contrast and the third local color. So pretty simple. And that's what we are going to dive into here in this video. Okay, so this shot here is from Iceland. It was a beautiful summer night and yeah, the light was awesome. And yeah, I like the area. The composition is nice in my opinion. And that's the reason why I picked this file here to demonstrate you guys. So like I said, it's about the gradient filter. So we will pick this up here and I will simply show you how I like to use it. There are two ways. You could either, let's say we want to add exposure, you can either drag it like this here, and then you have your adjustment. As you can see, with, and that's with the adjustment and without. The problem is when we drag it like this, we have a quite a hard transition zone. When we drag it a bit further up, you see, it's quite hard. You get all the adjustments in the foreground, but it can mess up your transition from dark to bright, and we don't want that. So what we instead do is we grab another gradient filter and we will drag it from the bottom. And only the red part here, this one, this is the feathered part. As you see, it's feathering out nicely. And if we would drag the green part into the frame, then we get the, yeah, the adjustment without my smooth transition here. So like I said, this is the way to do it in my opinion, because now you make sure that you don't have any weird edges going on here in the transition from dark to bright. All right, let's check again. So make sure to use only the feather part, drag the green part way out of the frame, and then you have this nice effect. And what we yeah, want to do here is nothing special, actually. We will simply brighten up our foreground and at the same time, maybe add a little bit of details to the blacks. So we will raise the blacks here as well. Something like that, really simple. And now we will do the same with the sky, but now we want to darken. So first let's zoom out, use the graduated filter and now we will drag it down from the top and we will darken the sky. And you see, I'm gonna turn the mask on, since we have a really smooth transition, it's not affecting our rocks here and the horizon line too much. Now it does, of course, as you see, you have a, a dark edge. It's almost the same like when you use it in the field, a graduated filter in front of your lens, then you can also get this effect if you're not careful. And that's what we're having here right now as well. So like I said, I like to use the feathered part, something like that. And yeah, we have a little bit of an adjustment going on here in the rocks, but we can overcome this by simply raising the blacks and also the shadows a bit. So yeah, it's doing the job here on the horizon line. And now we can also go down with the highlights if we want, and also a little bit up with the whites to get back some extra punch. So it's not too flat. And that's actually all I like to do. 
I use one gradient filter for the, the foreground and one for the sky. This of course mostly makes sense when you have a clear horizon line. When everything is mixed up with trees or mountains and so on, then you're better with using the uh, radial filter maybe, or the brush tool. But in this case, the gradient filter works totally fine in my opinion. And when we zoom in, you see we have a nice horizon line here, with nice tones throughout. So, perfect. And now we can press OK. There's n yeah, it's not big magic, but like I said, now we have a flatter file with even out tones and we can further work with it if we want. All right. And the second image is also from Iceland. And here I want to show you how I like to use, uh, how I like to add local color adjustments and also local contrast adjustments. And we will also further refine the graduated filter using the adjustment brush. That's a cool way to yeah, get a little bit more precise in your editing. So first let's create a copy of the background. We will call it uh, camera raw or whatever you want. And then we go to the camera raw filter. Here it is. Uh, this shot is from Aldea Landsfoss. Amazing place. It was a nice summer night again. And yeah, I like the picture. It's it's perfect. The, 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 the place is perfect. So it's easy to take good pictures in my opinion. Okay, so like I said, I want to add uh, local contrast and local color. But as a, first of all, let's add some color to the sky because it's again a clear horizon line which makes it easy for the graduated filter. And in this case, first of all, let's reset those here. Uh, let's yeah, darken the sky a little bit. When we click the mask here, we see where the feathering is going on. Something like that. It's okay. And let's re-click and let's lift the blacks a bit to overcome this effect here on the edges. And now we will add some, let's turn off the mask. We will add some warmth and also some magenta to the sky so it pops a little bit more. And since this is not a true white balance adjustment, it's actually just adding warmth and magenta. It's not as extreme as you would see it when being in the real raw editing. Then plus 37 tint is a lot, but here it's not. And yeah, we can also add some saturation if you want, not much. And yeah, that's actually it with the sky. Yeah, not, not really. <laughs> One more thing I want to show you, but in this case we will use another graduated filter because just in case we don't like it as much as we do with um, this adjustment, I will add a color to the sky. Something which is already there. So a red, reddish tone, red or on, uh, orange, something like that. And when we now drag that to the sky, you see it gets more colorful. And again, really smooth, feathering it out. That looks nice. And we can always readjust it. If we don't like the color, we can pick a little bit more red if we want. And we can also go down with the saturation if it's too strong. Something like that. That looks nice. And what I also like to do is I like to create a um, color contrast, that means warm highlights, blue shadows. So I will use a graduate filter and add some blue to my shadows to create a nice contrast there. Color contrast, maybe some magenta because they would work fine with blue. Let's check the mask. In this case, it's fine when we have a stronger transition here since we want to affect a lot of the foreground. All right, perfect. That looks uh, already quite nice. And I will now press OK. And I will do, let's first check it. That looks really cool. If it's too strong, we can go down with the overall opacity of our layer if we desire. Maybe something like that. All right. And now let's create another layer. We'll call it Camera Raw. But this time, 
yeah, number two, whatever. And go to filter, camera go raw filter. We of course could have done the same in the previous filter, but for demonstration purposes, I like to have it separated. And now we will add some contrast and at the same time, mask it out with our brush tool. That's a really cool way to yeah, add local adjustments. So first of all, let's grab another graduated filter and we will brighten the foreground a bit because the water needs a bit more yeah, highlight adjustments and also some whites and clarity. I want clarity in the water because it looks super cool in my opinion, but it looks really bad in the rocks here right now because yeah, the adjustment is too strong for the rest of the image. So what can we do? We will now go to the brush and click on this minus here, or we can also shift click if we want, but in, no, not shift alt, sorry. But in this case, we can just click on it. And when we now, this means we are now removing the effect in certain parts. Here we can adjust the size as you see, and I like to feather it out to a hundred because that makes it easier to have, um, yeah, good looking transitions between our water and the rocks. So now, like I said, we will paint it out and it's okay when we are overlapping a bit into the water because it looks natural when it's not brightened out everywhere. Something like that. And when we make it a bit smaller, we can add the effect back to the middle part here of the water if we want. Control C to remove it, something like that. All right. And when we now check this mask, you see it's mostly targeting the water. Maybe a little bit here in the rocks. We can fix that if we want. So we go to brush, pick the minus, and then we remove it a bit here on the rocks. No, not there. All right, it's really simple and it's actually yeah, quite powerful. And when you want to have an easy and quick method or technique to work on your files, this is the right one for you guys. So now we added local contrast together with the graduated filter and the brush tool. There it is. And when we ship, I'll click, sorry, I'll click on the bottom layer. You see the difference we made with just two simple graduated filter adjustments. All right, that's it guys. I hope you liked it. Um, I have a photography blog on my website where I talk more about this topic and also a lot of other topics. So make sure to check it out. It's uh, danielgastager.com and this is the cover page. And when you click on blog, then you will see the, all my topics I'm having there. So a lot to read, make sure to check it out. And there's a link down in the, in the description. So just click on it. Okay, so have fun with editing guys and see you later. Bye bye.